Simrad is leading the way in intuitive, easy to use electronics. And today we're gonna to walk you through the NSS Evo 3 and teach you how to tailor the machine to your needs on the water. Now I wanna get into downscan. So downscan is a portion of the structure scan transducer that's looking, looking straight down. So instead of side scan, which is looking at the left and right, this is looking straight down. It's a basically a, almost a 60 degree wide angle and so it gives us a lot more cone than what a traditional transducer may have. Uh, whip, uh, down in, side scan, the biggest thing I see is people over driving their contrast. So if they end up taking it way too high, they don't lose the water column, but you notice you've lost all of your detail in that bottom. So with down scan and with side scan, you're gonna notice that you get a better discrimination of what the actual bottom looks like looks like when we're talking about a sonar then you get what the targets are within the water column and it's going to give you a better picture over structure scan now what we do have turned on here is called fish reveal so if we go into more options we turn that on there and what that does is that overlays the sounder right on top of our down scan image so now we get the best of both worlds. We get that bottom detail that we want from our structure scan, and we get the water column seeing all the fish or targets that are hanging over these structures, and now we know why. This is a nice pillar or coral head, so now you can see all the bait and the fish that are hanging above it. So now we get the best of both. We get the best of the water column mixed with the best of the bottom contour. So under this menu, you also get pause where we can stop the transmitter, we can turn on range lines, so now we can get our depths real quick and easy. You can see right down the side where targets are. This also allows you to log your sonar. So now we can save our sonar just like we did in the echo portion, but we can also save it with side and down scan as well. So again, we can go find these targets. We can scroll back in time. And we can go and just like our sounder, we can create a new waypoint or use our autopilot to get back to that spot. And again, create a new waypoint, just new waypoint, bam, hit save, and the machine's loaded up, we're ready to roll. Clear cursor, gets you right back off, and we're scrolling again. So range, just like our sounder, can be put in auto mode, or we can manually, if we don't like this jumping like you're seeing here, I can just leave it in a standard 80 foot range and now I can see the bottom and everything uh, from the top of the rises to the bottom of the valleys. Contrast again is kind of like our gain on the sounder. You drive it too high, you lose all your definition, you drive it too low, you can't see a picture at all. Going into pallets, there's nine pallets, so you pick the pallet that best fits your visual uh, likeness or if you're at nighttime you again can go and change those color palettes so depending on light or your personal preference. When we jump into advanced just like our sounder we have TVG for our downscan so again we can address that top 20 percent so if we get too much of this silt or, or uh, noise bio noise in that upper layer we can clear that up with that TVG. Fish reveal options, this is basically controlling your sounder. So we got the gain and color of our sounder, we got the TVG of our sounder, and we can pick the palette overlays, because you're gonna realize some color palettes may show up better than others. So you can go and customize those color palettes as to how you want those targets to overlay. And more options, we went over that many. So along with down scan, we have side scan or our 2D view. So 2D view is now looking to the left and right of the boat. So if down is zero, we are looking from 30 degrees starboard to about 80 degrees starboard. We're looking from 30 degrees port to about 80 degrees port. So you will notice this black area in between where we don't have sound. That's the leading edges of those cones. So you won't have any returns unless there is 
some bait or fish in that water column. This is also a great way to tell quickly whether we're getting deeper or it's getting shallower. So as those lines come closer to the center line, it gets shallower. If they start spreading out further, it gets deeper. But again, we can see on our left side, you can see all of those details from that side scan. Now a side scan is kind of hard to understand what we're looking at. So how I like to describe it is like a father and son standing in the sun. So they're out and they're casting a shadow. So dad casts this nice long shadow where his son casts a short shadow. So now we can look at our structures and check by the shadow behind it and see if it's an object that's sticking up tall off the bottom or if it's just a little pebble or a small rock. So from those shadows, we can tell how tall that object is off the ocean floor. To our right side, we can see this is the sandy bottom coming up to the edge of these coral heads or the edge of this reef that we're going over. When we go in, you're going to notice all of the same uh, controls and settings. So your range, your contrast, your palette. Uh, when we go into advanced, your TVG. Now, because we got side scan, flipping left and right. In the event we've installed the transducer 180 degrees out, we can switch it around. So for a transom mount transducer, that cord usually comes out of the front of the transducer. In the event we couldn't mount it that way and had to reverse it, this is where we can make that picture now look right on the screen. View. View is another one. So we can do left and right at the same time. We can do left only. We can do right only. Now why would we use this or what do we need to use that? So say we're going to go in and build a custom page. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to grab my custom page and I'm going to want my chart. I'm going to want my sounder. Uh, and then I'm going to want my side scan, but I'm going to put it in twice. So we can put it in a four palette or I can hit here and I have the ability to change my view. So maybe I want to do that. So now I've done side scans on either side, then my sonar and my chart in the center. So when I hit save, it's going to build that screen. So now on this page, I can go in and go menu, view. I only want to look to the right. So now I see the right side. Over here, I can go menu, and I only want to look to the left. So now I've got everything. So instead of having them two split on a single screen, I now have them on two independent panels so I can see a bigger view of my left and my right. Now I also remember have the ability to adjust those splits. So if I think that that window is too large, I can shrink those windows. Simply hit save and it will redraw. So again, you have the ability to customize it and by picking left, right, you can control those windows. So we'll go back to full page change our view back to left and right. Now, in down or in side scan, as well as sonar, we again have the ability to scroll back in time. So we can go from our screen, drop a waypoint, or use our autopilot and get back to that point. We also have the measure. So measure allows you to say, well, how wide is this point here? I'm gonna go from here there so you can you can go and, and set where you want your start point where you want your end point and you can measure anything on the chart so we can see how high the hill is we can see how wide it is and again when you're done it's just finish measuring now you notice on side scan unlike down scan my cursor is right underneath my boat but you can see here when I move my cursor to drop a waypoint or to see something it'll tell you how far left or right of the center line or where the boat ran over that point is it also shows you the depth and the position how far back in your bearing so all that comes up when you activate that cursor and more options again puts us into those range lines so instead of horizontal they're now vertical and again the ability to pause so our last technology is going to be 3D. So when we were looking at 2D, remember it was a little hard to understand because things were laying down, so we weren't sure uh, how they actually look on the ocean floor. So when we go into 3D mode, this now allows us to take our camera 
and we can actually change our view and look around the picture. But if you notice, the targets are now coming up off the floor and showing in true three-dimensional representation. So we're running a replay file here because we've got a sandy bottom, so that's why you're seeing some of this skipping and you're seeing stuff ahead versus behind. But again, what we can do is control our, our zoom, range in and out. But what you're also seeing is this is what the swath pattern is of that 3D view. So I'm looking 148, 127 feet to the, the starboard and 160 out to the port. So it shows you where that beam is and what you're looking at. So when you go in here again, your range, just like you're used to, your contrast, just like you're used to, your color palette. Advanced, again, we got TVG. And again, if that transducer is installed incorrectly. Now the next thing we have is vertical enhancement. What this allows us to do is if we're in areas where there's small definition changes, so maybe one or two foot, but we want to make it easier to see those definition changes, we can increase what that one to two foot distance. So when you see, see how that rise is now larger than when I go down to low, how it's nice and small. It allows us to manipulate the picture to show us those smaller breaks when we're talking about uh, depth change or a rise or a fall off of our reef edge. Now, we also, again, have the ability to scroll back in time. So we can go back in time. I can go find a spot. I can go and hit my menu. And again, save a waypoint or use a cursor to get back to it. So all those features are the same, whether it's a sonar, side, down, or 3D structure scan. Now here, to get back to the boat, you simply squares you back up. But again, at any point, you can grab that screen, you can manipulate your view. So if we do want to scroll in and maybe see what's happening on this ledge, I can now zoom in and see what's happening right along that ledge. Now as we go back into our home menu, we're going to talk about our radar. So with radar, we're going to start with some of the setups and some of our abilities to change our views, and then we'll get into how to use the radar. So first thing is menu, settings, radar. Now this is where we have the ability to turn on what we want to see on the screen. So north indicator will always show a line where north is. Uh, your range rings, so do you want to see those range rings? And depending on your range, will depend on how many rings you have, and it will also set uh, the range or give you a number for the range of those independent rings. Range markers, uh, I'll show you range markers as we get in there. We do have the ability to put the compass rows on the outside of our radar rings. So a heading line shows you uh, which direction you're heading. We can change our bearings from true magnetic or go to relative if you want to change the way your target representation is. Data bar. Um, when the unit comes out of the box, you will have that data bar. A lot of people don't want to lose that two to three inches of screen display, so you have the ability to turn that off. So that will show you your information about your settings, uh, your uh, EBLs, VRMs, which we'll talk about, your guard zone settings, as well as your targets that are closest to the boat or that become dangerous targets. So they will show up by closest range and they will change colors as the danger level changes. So if we go in again, home, settings, radar, data bar, we can change whether we see our AIS or our MARPA vessels first or we can completely hide the data bar. Now when we completely hide the data bar, and we go back to our radar. What will happen is if a dangerous vessel does come into play, it will pop up, but only a single vessel that is the closest and the most dangerous vessel will show up right here on the right hand side of the screen. So even though we have removed the data bar, we don't completely lose that AIS MARPA target field for those dangerous vessels. So we'll go back in, radar. 
So your MARPA settings, so here's where you can put the history length and whether you want a safe ring around that MARPA target. And last is installation. So here's where we're going to go in and set up the radar. So on this vessel, we have a halo four foot array. So with that, the first thing we do have to set is the scanner length. So this model can come with a three, four or six foot and you have to program the processor as to which scanner you have to set up beam angle. So the next thing I always like to do is go in to see my radar status. This lets me know what's connected to it and what is available. So it tells me that I can do overlay, which means I have a compass. Now it doesn't tell me if it's a standard uh, one to five hertz compass or it's a 10 hertz compass. It just says there's a compass in the system. When I do go to MARPA status and it tells me that's okay, that tells me I have a 10 hertz or higher compass. You must have a 10 hertz or higher compass in order to do MARPA on the MFD. So it tells me, yep, we do have radar on the uh, heading on the radar. It, right now it's set to true. Uh, it does say that there's heading in the network. We do have GPS on the network. There's no error codes. So when we go into to scanner features, it tells you all the features that are turned on or available for the mode that you're in. And then scanner info gives you all the information, serial number, software of the scanner itself. So now what we're going to do is transmit. And we're going to go back to menu settings radar, installation, and now we have the ability to adjust our radar for the first time. Now with the halo radar, because the processing is being done up in the scanner, there's a lot less that you have to set up. So really all you have to set up is your antenna height, how high off the water that antenna is, that sets your STC curve. You have your the scanner length like we talked about, Okay, so the next adjustment is your sector blanking. Sector blanking allows you to pick four different areas that you can stop the transmit. Uh, why would we need this? So maybe on a sport fish, you've got some tower legs that are causing some erroneous uh, bounce back or false targets on the screen. We may have a uh, SATCOM or a TV antenna that the radar transmission is causing interference, we can shut that off so that the unit does not transmit in those zones. So you simply hit your sector, and from there you'd enable it, pick your bearing, so at what angle from the zero line of the boat, so if I picked 180, it'd be this way, and then what's the width? So that width is from 180, so it'd be 10 degrees uh, less and 10 degrees more, so it'd be from 170 to 190 if I was to enable that right there. So again, you have the ability to do four independent sectors for the radar. Uh, your park angle. So you have the ability with this radar to set how the radar scanner stops. So in most cases, it's going to be uh, perpendicular to the boat. But if it's off by a couple degrees, you have the ability to correct that or if you want to lay it parallel with bow to stern, you have the ability by putting in additional or subtracting uh, those degrees to make that park angle, to make that scanner stop the way you want it to lay up when you're done using the radar. And the last one is the halo light. So on the halo radars, we do have those lights in the uh, side caps. And here's where you have the ability to adjust it between low, medium, high, or off. And that's just when power is put to the radar, that light will either be off or at whatever intensity level you set it at. And in any event, somebody has come in and completely destroyed the settings, you can res reset the radar back to factory defaults. So that's your installation menu on your radar. So we're going to go back to standby. And what you may find, depending on how you've done your auto source select or how that radar has been connected to the network. Under sources, you may see something that's erroneous or no radar, or in a case with a halo radar, you have the ability to choose two independent 
radar sources because in the scanner we have the ability to do two completely independent receive circuits and set up those radars, both A and B, completely independent from each other and display them side by side on the screen. So by going into your source, you pick which radar you want. And then when I hit transmit, it's only gonna transmit A because that's all I've selected. So when that happens, my radar starts up and now I can get into my radar. So going into adjust, this is where you have your modes. So we're all kind of familiar with harbor and offshore modes. Every radar pretty much has those settings. Custom is manual mode. This is if you do not want to use one of the preset modes, you want to manually adjust your radar. Uh, weather is going to set up the radar to be the most aggressive to find those storm cells to separate a hard intensity center from the outlying, sh outlying showers. And then bird mode. Bird mode sets this up to be the most aggressive to see smaller targets at longer ranges. Now when you do go through these modes, you will see that the modes will change your gain, your C clutter, and also your scanner speed. Because when we go to bird mode, we want to slow that scanner down to get the most amount of energy on those smaller targets to get the best return. So gain, again, just like we talked about in the sounder, you can manually adjust that gain or you do have an auto gain setting. So again, I can toggle that on and off and let the computer try to find the best gain setting or I can manually set it if I want to change it and make it more aggressive in that custom setting. And C clutter again, the same way. So with C clutter, we can leave it in an auto state. We have the ability to take it out of auto and manual mode and in a custom range. And then we also have the ability to select the sea state. So if we are out on the water and we get into to heavier seas, we would take that to rough. What that will do is increase some filtering to eliminate all the noise bounce back off of the wave tops. Because waves will bounce false erroneous signals back to the receiver. So by changing that, you have the ability to tune that radar and make a lot cleaner picture. and then we back out. Now, just like our sounder with our radar, by pressing that enter button is a nice, clean, and easy way to scroll through everything we talked about. Rain clutter, I didn't talk about, but rain clutter, the only time you want to have that on is if you're in heavy fog or you're in rain. In heavy fog or rain, you'll see a lot of speckle that will show up on the screen, usually lighter colors, but the heavier the rain, the more it kind of covers the screen. So if we want to clean that out but not detune targets, we would increase our rain clutter. There's our mode, so we can go in and select and change all of our modes. So if we want to change how this radar looks for targets, you can see that now I'm seeing a lot more of those smaller targets. So when I'm looking for weather, I want to see those outlining shower bands, not just those hard storm cells. So you can tell that that's happened. Plus, if you look at the screen, you can also see that that scanner speed has also slowed down. So back in a harbor, you notice it changes the settings and that scanner speeds up. And then back to gain, so you can wrap around. So simply hit X and it hides that menu. So again, another quick and easy way to get in there. When we drop down into our advanced menu, you see some of these are locked out because we're in a mode. So if I want to go back and I'm going to pick my custom mode. Now I go into advanced. This gives us some more selections. So noise rejection. That's our first selection. Noise rejection for longer ranges lowers the target sensitivity. So the more we increase this setting, the more we're decreasing the target sensitivity. So what's that doing is that's kind of detuning. So if we get a lot of clutter from another radar that's in our area, we want to turn up that noise rejection. Uh, if we're not using it, again, we're going to bring it down to low. Uh, but when we do go in there and we do start cranking that up, you got to be careful because when we increase that, we are lowering the target sensitivity. Threshold. Threshold sets 
at what level do I want to start seeing targets on my screen? So preset is at 30. So what we're doing is eliminating some of those light false targets that might show up. Uh, when would we change threshold? In the event we might get into heavier seas that the uh, sea state uh, sea clutter is not taking out, you can increase that threshold. Or if you are looking for birds, you might want to decrease that threshold because we want those smaller targets to show up on the screen. So we may take that threshold down. Target expansion will increase the length of a target so that it's easier to see. So that's kind of like doing our scroll speed. When we increase that scroll speed, we stretch that target. So by increasing that expansion, we make that target stretched out. Interference rejection again, also used when we've got those radars side by side. Target separation. This is how we control our beam angle. So we can take our like a 5.7 degree beam angle and scroll it down. So by increasing that, we make this radar more sensitive to targets that are close together. It will actually separate them. You have two buoys or two markers. You'll actually separate those marker poles rather than having them together. But you got to be careful because when you increase that, you will decrease your target range. So again, you want to use that to your benefit when you're doing that like under two mile range where you want to see all the targets on the water. You want to separate those buoy balls, those markers, those boats. You can increase that uh, or you can bring that back down. Fast scan allows us to control the speed of the radar. So when I go into high, that will increase that scanner speed. If I go to medium, we'll start to slow it down and off, we'll take it down to our traditional 24 RPM. When we are in high, if we're under a two mile range, this will put that scanner speed at 60 RPM. So that will allow us to see a lot more target movement if we're in a high traffic area, like a port or an entrance way, and we've got a lot of traffic coming in and out. This gives us a faster update rate to see how those targets are moving around the vessel. So next when we go in and we're going to play with our view. So velocity track. Velocity track is where we have the ability to color targets that are uh, approaching to be one color based on the color palette we're in. So in a red color palette, something that's approaching will be yellow. Something that's diverging or leaving will always be blue no matter what the color palette is. But if I'm in a yellow color palette, that approaching target will be red. So it's an offsetting color to give you quick situational awareness of a moving vessel, whether it's heading towards you or moving away. So you do have the ability to turn it on to normal where you'll get both approaching and diverging or leaving, or we can just do approaching only because we figure if it's leaving, it's not uh, threatening to us. So I'll put on normal. We have the ability to go into settings. So at what speed source do we want our targets to, to start, or our Doppler to start working? So when the vessel's moving, ours or theirs, or combined, is 3.4 miles per hour, we'll start seeing those targets move around on our screen and they will be colored. And you do have the ability for all radar sources, so that means no matter whether I'm on Halo A or Halo B, that same setting will be there. Remember I talked about earlier, that warning target? So you can see this is the closest target that is coming close to our TCPA or CPA settings. So symbology, this will turn on or off all of those settings on the screen. Target trails. Again, target trails is really good if we're doing things like tracking objects. We can kind of see where they're moving or going or for finding birds. Finding birds is where we really use target trails because we have the ability to select the time frame we want that individual target to stay on the screen. So we may set that to a minute or three minutes. And what happens is as we hit a target return, it's gonna show up on the screen as its regular 
target, but over the next three minutes, that target will actually start changing colors. It'll kind of go to a grayscale. And as we can see, kind of starting here, you can see the grayscale, the grayscale changing. So what that means is for three minutes, it starts as a heavy dark gray and then slowly deteriorates to a light gray and then disappears at three minutes. Why do we want target trails on? So if we're looking for birds, you're going to look for a small area on your radar screen about the size of a dime or a quarter that's going to have all these multicolored little targets in there. Because birds, we don't always catch every sweep. If they're sitting on the water picking up bait or resting, we may miss them. If they're turned sideways, we may miss them. We may only catch them when they're abreast. Again, all depends on what size target they are. So by turning trails on, we don't have to try and remember, oh, I remember there was a target there. Now the next sweep, oh, where did it go? By leaving trails on, I can see where all those targets will end up grouping together. So if I see that dime or quarter size area with all those multiple targets, I'm gonna head there because there's a good bet that that's a flock of birds. So again, you'll turn that off. Palette, again, just like our Sounder Technologies, we have the ability to change our color palettes. You can have a white background, black background. You can change to, to green or yellow target returns. So you have the ability to select what you want. And just like charting, we have the ability to do heading north or course up. So you can change the way that that radar orientates. And then position source. So kind of like our chart, we can do look ahead. So if we only want to see two thirds or greater of that image. We always have it in front of us. We also have the ability to do sorry to do an offset. So I can actually move that radar target anywhere on the screen if I'm seeing a whole lot of targets on this side, I can, I can change that location. And simply go back to center. True motion. So true motion will allow targets to move around the screen versus the boat always stays in the center and the radar image changes. You'll actually see the boat and all accompanying targets that are moving will move around the screen and the landmass or stationary items will stay in place. Once you get to about uh, two thirds of the screen, it will reset and start back at center. Okay, so next will be the EBL VRM, that's electronic bearing line and variable range marker. So you can turn those on and set adjust. So you now have the ability to grab that and you notice you're putting that kind of a, a circle around it based at a range. So that's your variable range marker. And then this heading line is your electronic bearing line. So this allows you to kind of quickly kind of see the target if it's tracking towards you down that line or if you want to know range and distance, you can do that through the uh, EBL and VRM. Uh, you also have the ability to set an offset. So if I did want to set it, say, on a target, I could set it on a target. Uh, let me pick one down here so I can manipulate it. And then I can go in, save my offset, go back in and adjust. And now I could actually go and take that. And if that boat's traveling maybe on that vector, I can actually see at what point in front of me we're going to intersect. So it gives me some information, tells me that, you know, I've got 225 feet before I hit that. So it gives you a lot of information by simply saving that EBL. And turn it on and off. And you do have two of them, so you can set two of those on the screen. Next one that's important is guard zones. So guard zones, you have the ability to set up an area that if targets travel 
through, in, or out that you'll get an alarm. So you do have two that you can actually set up. You can also set up the sensitivity. So you don't want it to be super low that if a bird cruises through, you don't want an alarm, but you do want to have that sensitivity set high enough that if a hard target moves in through there like a boat, that uh, you want to make sure you get that alarm. So set that up. We're going to go in, select it. You can select your shape. So we can do a sector or circle. So I'm going to do sector for now. You have the ability to set the range so I can, you know, how far out I want it. Okay. Depth, so how deep do I want that? Bearing, maybe I don't want it in front of me. Maybe I want it to move, maybe I'm up against a seawall or what have you. I just want to see what's coming to my midships. So you have the ability to move that around the boat. And width. So how big do I want it? So again, you can set. Save your guard zone. So if I go back in, when do I want my alarm? Do I want it when they're entering or exiting. So boom, I've got an alarm because it showed a target that was exiting. And then turn it off. You simply deselect. Again, you got two of them you can set up, so you have the ability to put them in different positions around the vessel. So whether you're anchored up at night or you're just traveling and just want uh, an audible alarm to kind of wake you up when something shows up in front of the boat. Then, when we're all done with the radar, we can hit standby. Now, just like our sounder, remember we talked about it, if I press and hold that icon, I can do that dual range radar. So you notice they're completely different palettes. One says A, one says B. So I highlight and then I can transmit. Now I can do it at different ranges you can see. I also have the ability to go in and select different modes. Maybe you want an offshore mode in this guy. So I'm on you know, bird or weather on one, I can be an offshore harbor on the other. So it allows you to set that up completely independent. So that's the nice thing about having that dual range. I can stay tight around the boat with one, but then looking for long range navigation on the other. Okay, so the next page we're gonna talk about is our nav page. So our nav page is kind of that uh, perspective view. So it uh, allows you to, to zoom in and out on your icon. It kind of has that, instead of that bird's eye view that we're used to, where you look straight down on top, we're actually looking kind of an angle in front. It's kind of like putting on 3D in our map. And what I mean by that is if we go into our chart and we go in and more options, we turn on 3D. So 3D allows us the ability to kind of look at that perspective view, but with 3D it also uh, allows us to go in and, and change uh, that camera angle where when we're in our nav page it's a set angle so traditionally we're looking bird's eye but in 3D we can adjust that angle but when we're in our nav page it is a set angle and we're sitting at one spot behind the boat we can't change our camera angle at all but while we are in here we do have the ability to change the data that shows up on the screen so if you go into menu and edit we can grab any bit of information and change it. So instead of depth, if I really want to go into my navigation page and use maybe my distance to destination, I can put my distance in there. It tells me how far to my waypoint or an active cursor or whatever's going on. <clears throat> so we can have that. So when we do pull up a uh, navigation, we can see that and that information will be put onto the screen. Now another nice feature is if you go into 
save it and you go in a lot of people used to like the old uh, large position page we still have the ability to change that to a nice large position page so again if you go in and you want to go in and make a custom page we can now do maybe our chart maybe our echo and we can bring that in now we have that nice large position page and just remember guys we still have that hidden menu where we can adjust our splits so we can resize it and it's always nice to have a nice big position page there sitting in front of us so that's the nice thing about that nav page is we can make it a nav screen or we also have the ability to make it a large position so from there our next icon that we'll review is autopilot so we have the ability to have the autopilot set up as a well, full icon or we can just do it as a sidebar or we can do it both so if we go into that menu settings advanced and features this is where we turn on our autopilot page the panels autopilot panels so if we don't want that big full page or the ability to put it into a split screen and all we want is that sidebar we just deselect that so that's how we toggle that on and off so again you can have it as a sidebar or you can have it as a tile and just like I did with our nav page we can also go in and build a custom page so maybe chart nav an autopilot page and now we can <clears throat> build that page and again we can adjust our splits and we can kind of size that down so it kind of fills up the screen so again just the ways we can customize it if we make it a tile that we can go ahead and use in a split screen versus just having it on the sidebar so I'm going to go back to full page so something that shows up that you notice immediately when you're looking at S for standby is you're noticing that box that box means that somebody else is in control so there might be another uh, MFD on the boat there might be a dedicated autopilot display on the boat so what that means is I'm not in control right now now the one thing that is good is if you're in any mode whether you're in control or not your standby button which the wheel key we set this up as our autopilot button or any dedicated standby button on an autopilot control head or remote instantaneously drops it out whether you're in control or not but if I'm in control here I cannot turn a rotary knob on another MFD or an autopilot display to make changes because I'm in control and those devices will have that little box with the X in it so I'll show you I just took control from another device now you notice that I can't do anything with this wheel because I'm not in control now if I go and take control you'll notice that if I press the rotary knob see how these all lit up that means my rotary knob is now available so I can make my course change so my actual heading my desired heading and I can make those and then if I hit my X key you notice they go blank so that way I don't have control why is this something to pay attention to because if I'm in my split screen and I'm inadvertently on my autopilot page and I think I'm on my chart page and I do this to zoom I'm actually changing my autopilot so now I'm taking a hard turn and I'm veering off versus zoom so that's why anytime I have an autopilot page up I want to make sure that I hit that X and you can see the colors change to deselect that so I don't inadvertently think I'm changing my zoom when I do actually change my autopilot so always something to pay attention to again we'll go back to full page so now kind of go in and talk about the modes so standby 
pretty self-explanatory. The autopilot's disengaged. <clears throat> Auto, you notice beneath it, it says heading hold. So that means all we're doing is going off of a compass heading. So when I hit auto, this heading is all I care about. So what that means is if I have wind or current, I may still be heading 335, but I may have shifted to port or starboard anywhere from 100 feet to a quarter mile, depending on how long my journey is and how hard that wind or that current is. So that's where something nice that comes into play is called no drift. No drift is a hybrid auto nav mode. So what does that mean? That means it's based on a heading, but when I pick that heading, it automatically snaps an imaginary line around the world and it follows that line like navigation mode. But unlike navigation mode, I don't have to put a waypoint in the machine to stay on this. Where is this helpful? Well, if I'm going down the intercoastal and I've got a, a jetty and there's an outgoing tide, if I set it into no drift and I want to cross that, I won't get sucked out with the outgoing tide and have to worry about taking control of my autopilot and steering it back in or grabbing the wheel and having to adjust it manually. This takes out the effects of wind and current. So it's just like nav mode, but again, based on a heading. So the nice thing is if I want to make a change, I can simply change my heading and now it snaps a new imaginary line and it will follow that. So that's why I call it that hybrid auto nav mode. So that's no drift. So we'll go standby. So obviously the last one everybody pretty much knows is nav mode. That's going to a waypoint or a route. So in order to do that, we have to have nav information from the MFD in order to navigate there. So we can go into our chart just for quick navigation I'm just going to just do a quick go to cancel go to go to cursor so now you can see now I can automatically engage that by hitting yes and the autopilot will automatically take control or if I hit no maybe I just want to manually steer for a little bit there's something in my way I've jumped out now when I'm in my autopilot as long as I have that nav information it will now allow me to get into nav mode so it's telling me my course change is greater uh, than the 20 degrees I said that I've allowed it to do so in the settings when you set up that autopilot you have the ability to set up to a 40 degree course change without having to acknowledge but because it is greater than that I have to acknowledge now that also happens in a route if I'm going from one route point to the next route point, if that course change is greater than the setting I have in there, up to 40 degrees, it's always going to acknowledge. The autopilot does not want to make that hard turn without somebody saying, yes, it's safe, everybody is okay, let's go on. So that is something to pay attention to when you're navigating a route. And again, back to standby. Now, when we are in auto, you're going to notice that something else opens up. Turns. So to get into our turn patterns, which we have some preset turn patterns built into the system, you must be in auto first. So you go into auto mode, then from there you can go into turns. So U-turn, pretty straightforward, it's going to add 180 degrees to your course change. But when you go in there, you need to tell it whether I want to turn to starboard or to port, because it may not be, port, it may not be safe to turn one way versus the other. So basically I'll say starboard's okay. You notice it's cranked in that 180 degree course change and now it's gonna start moving my rudders. Go back to standby, drop it back in auto. And now the next turn is C-turn or continuous turn. This is basically if I wanna just sit there and make a circle around something. So if I select that, I can set how many degrees per second I want that turn. So I go in or how many degrees per minute, sorry, how many degrees per minute I want, and again, whether I'm going to port or starboard. The next one is spiral. So you have the ability to do a spiral. Uh, you can set the initial radius, and then whether you want to spiral to port or starboard, and then you can do for each turn, what's your change? 
So I want to increase seven foot as I'm turning in. Next one is zigzag. So with zigzag, you have the ability to do what's your course change. So right now it's set 60 degrees. We're going to start on starboard. Uh, how long you're going to be on that run before you make that course change. So what's your current heading? How long you're going to be on that run before you make what desired course change? And then it just goes 60 degrees port, 60 degrees starboard. Back in a turn square, this is if you want to box an area. So you have the ability to go and starboard a port. How long before I make a 90 degree turn? It's always going to be 90 degrees because we're making a square. The one I always find funny is yes turn because this is something that we've been trying to take out of autopilots for years. Now we're actually using engineers to put it back into an autopilot. So basically this allows you to do a lazy S. So if we're dragging baits and we just want to make them look like they're naturally swimming, we can set that amplitude. How many degrees of change do I want to allow it to do to make this lazy S as it goes through? And do I want to start going to port first or to starboard first? So our last turn pattern is depth or depth contour tracking. Depth contour tracking allows you to go in and taking the depth off of our sounder, we can set which side, which side is shallow and which side is deep. So all we're doing is saying that right now starboard is shallow. What we do is we set it up so it knows which way to turn. If it sees that the boat is getting into shallower waters, it will make a move to port. If it sees it's getting in deeper waters, it'll come back to starboard. So what you have the ability to do is use your sounder and follow that depth line. Now once you're in there, you have the ability to adjust your cross course angle. So you can actually do like an S turn over that depth. Uh, because we're in too shallow of a water, we're not able to really show you this feature live, but uh, it will show you how in the manual to set this up to follow that contour. So now if you're fishing and running baits out the back, you have the ability to keep them in whatever depth range you want. So now everything I've showed you that we can do in the full page can all be done in the sidebar. So that drops out if we go into our uh, modes. So again, you notice turns are off because I'm not in auto. As soon as I go in auto, turns turn on. So everything I've done in the full page, I can do in that sidebar. A little bit different is your course changers, one degree versus a rotary knob, but everything's there. You know, engage, so go into auto mode. You can do that with a quick button or by pressing it and going into auto. So just two ways of doing it. Again, with the machine, we usually give you multiple ways to do the same features. All right, so now we want to talk about uh, instruments. So instruments can be set up, uh, whether it's engine instrumentation or any other device connected to the enemy A2000 backbone. So you notice we have the Mercury icon here. So Navico has the ability to show Mercury, Yamaha, Evinrude, Suzuki, or Honda with their own personalized gauge page. So if they're in an, uh, a later model engine and they have the proper gateway, we have the ability to show the gauges on our display as they would show up on their own Mercury or whatever dedicated engine manufacturer's gauge looks like. Now, when we look in here, we do have some drill down menus on the Mercury side where we can find out a little bit more information just by touching the screen. We can open up a lot more about the vessel. So uh, that allows us to get some more information for us to see. Now, if you also notice, we do have a Mercury icon on the side. So just like our autopilot icon, we can open up that Mercury sidebar. So we can find all the same data by going in the sidebar. If I go into more, there's my coolants, my pressures, my tanks. So all that information, just like I saw it on the main screen on the main page, we have the ability to do it in the sidebar. But again, with this icon here, we can, again, build it into a customizable page. So if I want to do chart echo, maybe radar and engine data, I can build a four-way split. 
and save that page. So now I've got that data in there. So I can have that information on the screen and then I can hide all of this. So again, with that, again, customizable where we can adjust the size. So if it's not that important, I can shrink it down a little bit. So you have the ability to change all that information. So whether it's as a tile built into a split screen or a full page, or whether it's a sidebar. Now with Mercury, you'll also notice some vessel, vessel control information here. Here's where we can do cruise control, we can do troll control, also their active trim modules, we're able to control them from here. As well as, if you're using the Mercury with a joystick, you have to use the Mercury Autopilot, we will access the Autopilot as well, so we can control that from the MFD. So the next icon is the instrument icon. Now this is if you have an older engine that does not have the preset modes, doesn't have the proper gateway, or we're just looking for any other bit of information that's coming into the MFD or the backbone via NMEA 0183 or NMEA 2000. We have the ability to select that and see some preset screens where we can actually scroll through them that are already preloaded in the machine or we can through the menu key go in and see our presets. So here we see what is preset or if you add on you'll see the additional builds. So again we do have an engine page which will populate with whatever data. Now you notice when it first opened up it had three engines on there so it will set up based on our setting under home settings, fuel, vessel setup. When we go in here, and because this is tied to Mercury, we don't have to set it up manually, but this will be where you set up how many tanks, how many engines, and when you do that, it will automatically populate that engine page with the appropriate amount of engines. Now again, this is preset, so whatever's here, you have to live with. So you can't change it. But you do have the ability now, if we hit back, we can go to new. Now I want, to, I want a new dashboard. So it's going to go search the database of what it has available. So maybe I already have a template that I want to use. So here's some of the preset templates that we have in there. Some of them are already on the screen, but others aren't. So maybe if I want to set up a screen with a lot of digital information, I can pick that inbuilt save it in there and now it's locked in. But what I do have the ability to do is customize. So I can go in with my menu, I can hit edit and I can pick any box here and then I can select any bit of information that is available on the network. I do have the ability to change the caption so if I want to write what information I want that to be named and then I'm done. and save. Okay, so those are all the presets that are preloaded, allows you, some of them allow you to change the data, others don't. Uh, when we go in and we select new, maybe we want to start from blank. So when we start from blank, we can name it, so whatever we want to name it, so if this is just custom, you can name it custom, you can name whatever, but if you click add gauges, it allows you to add digital information, full round analogs, half analogs. We can bring in that engine uh, page that we showed previously, uh, a rudder page. We can open up bars, so uh, a standard bar that you can put whatever data in. You've got trim bars, you've got rudder bar. Now, to load these or move them across, you simply grab it and pull it out. So you can pull it out and put it on the page. 
So there's your bars. You also have some navigation information that you can throw out on the screens. So plot gives you the ability to throw any type of data on the screen, set the duration and watch as that data changes over time. That's time plot. And then decorations, so if we want to do a rectangle box for maybe a square gauge or we want to do a frame or an outline, we can do a circle. I'll show you some of that information in just a second. So you can customize this. So we don't have to have a black background. We can make it different colors. So what I'm going to do is just cancel out of this. And when I go back in here, I kind of just made for just instructional purposes. Here we've done. We've taken out the engine, some half analogs, the rudder, uh, a full analog gauge, some of our bars. So you can go in, and while you're here, once you pull them out, when you're under edit, this is where I can go and I can now change the information. I could set min max levels. I can set warning levels. So I selected, you know, for engine port, I wanted the temperature. Now I can set those to different variables uh, for my warnings. Now what I also did, as you notice the blue background, is I went in and I pulled out from decorations a circle. I resized it. I changed the color. So you can go in there and changed colors to a wide variety for your background color. So if you don't want black, you can change different colors as your background. And you notice the square box allows me to resize it. So anything on here, I can move or I can resize. So like this gauge here, I can take it and I can resize it. So I have the ability to customize this page however I want with whatever background colors and whatever information I need. Once I'm done, I simply hit done and save and I've created my custom page. So now that we're coming to the end of the presentation, there was a lot of information for you guys to digest. So in the event you're out on the water and you do forget something that we talked about and you don't have the ability to pull up this video later, the NSS EVO 3 has the actual user manual embedded in the machine. So now if we hit view, we will load that. It is a large file, 9.6 meg, so it'll take a little time. Now we have the ability to zoom in, zoom out, uh, page up or down, depending on where we are within the manual. Uh, we can go to a select page, so if we know the page number because we've been there before, we can do that, or we can hit search. Now we can search a word, and we can scroll through that manual, through the search up or down, to find exactly what you're looking for, to give you a quick brush up on the function you need to learn.